Phyllis is joining us today, and we're super excited that she's here to share some insight. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to mute myself and uh, go ahead, take it away, Marlena. Thank you so much. So hello, everyone. I'm very glad to be here with you. And I'm so grateful to Jason, Theo, and David for organizing the whole thing. Uh, I think it's it's amazing idea, mostly nowadays when we have this uh, pandemic time. Uh, so, and I am also, I'm really pleased that I, I can be here and share with you some of my thoughts and experiences. Uh, probably I will say some things which you know already or you heard from other uh, people because is it is very very uh, uh, yeah it's it's probably we we were learning we are learning from the same people so and uh, when Theo wrote to me if I would like to uh, to be a guest presenter I was a bit surprised and I wasn't sure if if I'm good enough and then he said you know we can learn a lot from everyone. And this is really, really, really true. And I think that everyone has something to, to share which, which can be really helpful for all of us. Uh, so I'm very, very happy I, I'm here. So uh, first, uh, what I would like to, to do is uh, maybe talk about warm up and do some exercises. It's 4 p.m. In, in Poland now, so, so I'm already after warm up and after playing even uh, the rehearsal. But anyway, I would like to talk about it because I had some troubles with warm up. So uh, when I think about warm up, I have uh, three questions in my mind. So the first is what is the warm up? Uh, how long does, uh, does it take? And why is it important? And the first one, what is the warm up? I'm, I try to be quite active, you know, I, I'm uh, training some sports, running, biking. So, of course, before going for a run, uh, if I want to, to, do, to do like 10 kilometers, I just have to prepare myself for that. So I can't just go and run because it's possible I, I will have some injury or I will break some something. So it's dangerous. We have to prepare ourselves. So what we do, we warm up. We just move our ankles, our knees, our the whole body, uh, because we want to show our body that, oh, now we will be working and we will do something what we didn't do like a uh, few minutes ago. And the same for me is before playing trombone. I have to prepare myself, my body, for some work, uh, workout, uh, which will be practicing or playing rehearsal or even playing concert. So warming up is just preparation for playing. And how long does it take? I, when I was studying in Krakow, I was waking so early because we had a lack of uh, practice room. So I had to be like 7 a.m. <laughs> in music academy and, and take uh, the practice room and, and start warming up. And I was doing this like one hour, sometimes even two hours. And I was like doing this because it was normal for me. I didn't think about it too much. Then I have exam or audition or concert. And I still need one hour for warm up. And I was thinking like something is wrong. I shouldn't do it that long. I shouldn't spend that much time for only warm up. So maybe I should change something because I, I was getting a bit crazy. You know, I, I didn't feel com comfortable if I did that uh, shorter time, but I also felt tired when I was doing this one hour. So then I realized that warm up is different thing than my daily routine. So practicing trombone, I need just, just like 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. It also depends uh, on the day. Sometimes I feel better. Sometimes I feel maybe a bit worse. So I need more time or less. I just observe myself. I'm listening myself, my body, how it reacts and I do what I need. I don't, uh, I don't want to be really, uh, you know, stuck in, in one rule. You have to warm up half an hour and that's the rule. No, it shouldn't be like that. We have to be flexible and we have to do what our body uh, wants to do from us. So 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. And why is it important? As I said before running, I have to warm up because I don't want to make an uh, uh, injury. I don't want to break something. And the same with, is with instrument. We, we use really, uh, really uh, delicate muscles on our face. And also 
you know, we don't want to damage them. We don't want to uh, make any pressure and we don't want to break something in our bodies somewhere else. So we just have to spend the time for preparation. And I, I even know uh, my friend, he, he had this problem that he, he started the uh, day with playing some really high crazy note because he could uh, without warming up. And unfortunately he had accident and one his muscle just broke. So unfortunately it can happen. I know some people who, who they, they think that they say that they don't need uh, warm up and it's fine for them. But I think most of us just have to think that it's important and we, we have to find time and, and maybe organize it. So my warm up looks like mostly times I, I do it on the morning because of work. Rehearsal is on the morning. So, so of course I, I have to come a bit earlier and uh, I start mostly times uh, with my breathing, some, some breathing exercises and uh, mostly to oxygenate myself, to wake up, to just uh, relax and get get used to a bit more intensive breathing because we breathe differently when we play instrument than when we breathe like no, in normal uh, life so so it's just also preparing for for this uh, more hard uh, breathing and probably most of us knows a lot of breathing exercises and i think it's it's good to do them even if you feel okay i did that many years and i don't need it okay but sometimes when you do it you you just feel more relaxed you you just feel more comfortable and it's it's nice really to do it so most of you are in states probably so it's it's early on morning you can just breathe in uh, and blow to your hand so you can feel the the air line it's really it should be really warm and and stable so i repeated it just a few times uh, before i was doing more uh, exact uh, exercises i was counting with the metronome which is also good but sometimes i don't have time for that so i just breathe in and out to to just get relaxed the next step is the mouthpiece and i know that there is uh, there are many opponents of playing mouthpiece for me it works and i really like it i i really like to start contact with my instrument uh, through the mouthpiece and I think it's, uh, yeah, well, everyone is different and we have to accept that. And not everything is for everybody. So if you don't like it, you, you feel that it doesn't help you or maybe even make some problems, don't do it. But I don't think that it's the rule. No, you shouldn't play mouthpiece because it's bad. No, for some people it's good. And mostly if you do it uh, well, so of course I shouldn't expect that the sound on mouthpiece would be the same as on trombone, but I have to try to make as beautiful sound as I can and try to even sing and, and think about sound in my head, uh, blow the air, feel it also from the other side. When I'm working with, uh, with uh, children, I just uh, let them blow the, the air, only air through the mouthpiece. and just feel the air from the other side. And then blow and in the same time, just make closer my lips and start uh, and make, make them uh, uh, to make the, the vibration. And then I can go up and down and for me, playing mouthpiece can be really similar as, as warming, like as exercises for singers. So I can sit with piano and, and just uh, play the note. And from that note, I can make some, some exercises which singers are doing. And probably most of you had some, um, were in the choir or, or you had possibilities to, to hear how choir is preparing for singing. So we can just make the same really simple 
and really easy uh, exercises. Just think about the sound and about the vibration that is all the time. Doesn't matter where you are, down in the middle or in high register, just keep, uh, keep your uh, embouchure really relaxed and let the, the lips uh, uh, pass. <laughs> And we can continue, we can just create some, some melodies or take some Bordoni melody and play like that. Don't play too much, it, it should be just like one minute or something, just, just, just do it every day, but see how it works and how it helps when you next take trombone. Because next step is uh, with trombone, of course. So we take our instruments And also my daily routines includes uh, flexibilities, exercises, uh, staccato, so playing scales, playing uh, staccato, legato. So I build my workshop, I, I make my tools, which I can use later when I play some, uh, you know, pieces or, or I go to orchestra and play other things. But before that, I just want to warm up. So I want to prepare my muscles and my body to uh, to practice. So I, I do really simple things. First of all, I, I start from F and just play long tones with moving the slide to, uh, to E uh, and just try to be focused on my sound and on this airflow that the, the air is all the time really, really relaxed and my sound is round and warm. Yeah, and the same I play from E to E flat. Uh. And as you see, my move, uh, the slide is really slow and I'm, I'm trying to keep the sound in the center all the time, even if I move my slide. Now from E flat to D. And I continue this uh, until uh, F octave lower. And then I can go uh, from B, uh, B flat. So maybe we will play. And I continue this, uh, it takes like a few minutes, maybe five minutes. So I feel that I, I can blow really stable uh, uh, airline and, and my sound is round and I feel comfortable with that. The next thing which I, I prefer to do, it's really slow, uh, flexible uh, exercise, but only in this middle and low range. So I don't go high on the beginning. I just play really soft, and as, as beautiful as I can in the middle register.
you can repeat that until seventh position. And just try to keep uh, really connected every sound. So, so we shouldn't hear any pause or any breaks. We should make it as connect, connected as, as possible, as we, we are singing. Yes, so this I continue until seventh position. And the last thing which I will do, uh, and this is uh, the, the exercise which I have, uh, which I learned in Bern when I was studying in, with Ian Bausfield, is playing just melody in every key. So we start in low register and we go higher. And then we see we, how, how our ambassador is working and, and just, we can just catch every every note like in a whole uh, register which makes us prepared for playing in every branch so the melodies you can you can hear it i play in f major i start from uh, uh, low f <laughs> Yes, and then I continue in next key. So I play in G flat. Yes. And I don't use tongue. I, I try to play really smooth glissando or, or just move my uh, hand a bit faster to avoid the glissando, but I don't use tongue. So I just keep blowing, even if I go higher with the melody. So we, if we play in every key, suddenly we are in uh, higher, just like one octave higher. <laughs> And again, we play G flat, the next G, uh, natural, A flat, A, and B. So we play as high as we can, even until top F or higher, as we feel we can. But we should stop when we feel that we are tensed and it doesn't really, really work well. So next day we will go higher, but don't push yourself too much. Just make it easy and as simple as it's possible. So I really recommend to find the melody. It can be this melody, it can be another melody. Just play it in every key and, and try to make it as melodic as it's possible. Play with great sound and just have fun. You know, don't think about warm up as something. Oh my God, I have to do it, okay? And forget, no, just enjoy it. And I think if you enjoy warm up, you will enjoy the whole practicing, uh, you know, time. So if you start the day good, <laughs> you should have a good day. I, I, I think it's, it's like that. So that's more or less this what I do. If I have more time, I start play some scales and, and maybe some staccatos. It depends how much time I have and how I re what I really need. Uh, but this is the basic thing what I do to really wake up and to, to prepare myself for other stuff. So for rehearsal or for, uh, for practicing uh, time. So I really recommend to think about it uh, and, and you know, treat ourselves good. So, so just be kind for ourselves. Don't surprise, don't uh, make something what is unexpe un unex uh, unexpected uh, to our body. Just make things which are, uh, which are good for you. So, so 
that's why I think that warm up is is very important thing. So if no one that does uh, anyone has any questions about this, what I said, it's everything fun. Yes. Yeah. So like when you're playing, when you're working in orchestra and um, and you have your warm up before work, do you ever do you adapt your warm up for the repertoire that you're playing? It's a very good question. I think it's yes, yes. For example, if I play, uh, you know, tuba mirum or I play bolero or whatever else, I just have to think about it, what I need, which tool I need. And I have to think about this tool and just prepare it. So, so if I play something which is more technically uh, difficult for me or some staccato things, I just, you know, I played this thing so which I which we played now, but I add some things which are helpful for me to to just go on rehearsal and I'm I feel that I'm ready to play this stuff. You know, uh, sometimes we have to play really soft things, chorales. It depends because you know in in orchestra rep repertoire we have to be prepared for everything. <laughs> so so yes, I think it's uh, it's important to know what is my plan. So if I want to practice, uh, I want to do my daily routine, so I'm free, you know, I can, I can do whatever I want because I have time. But if I have rehearsal or I have uh, audition or whatever else, I have to think about it. So, so my warm up should be a bit connected to that. Yeah. So I spend less time with long tones, but maybe more time with some staccato exercises, you know. And also it depends how much time I have, because then you can, you know, uh, if you have more time, you can just uh, make some breaks and separate one exercise from the other. But if you have short time, you have to find the, the solution, how to prepare everything, but uh, to feel comfortable, but do it in, in shorter time. Yes. Do we have another questions about warming up? What are some examples of staccato exercises? Yeah, so uh, basically I play just like in long notes, I play, I repeat some staccato on one note and go down or up. So I play. <laughs> Or I take some uh, Arban exercises, you probably everyone knows that, so I play. <laughs> I try to think about it that it has to be clear. I put air to every note and I care about every note. I don't care only about the first and last. I just care about every note. And the same is with scales. So you can just take, or arpeggios. Uh, I think arpeggios are, are really nice. So I, I start from F major. <laughs> And I also try to care about every note. Then I go to G flat, G natural, A flat, and also through the, the whole uh, range. Or I play some scales. You can play one scale, like this, this exercise. <laughs> Or just uh, play some some uh, you know different kind of. Uh, for example, this is also nice, uh, and I think it's from trumpets. So different various exercises which which uh, which are connected with staccato but just think about uh, blowing the air the same as as you did when you were playing the long note uh, caring about the sound 
and caring about every every note, not only a few of them. So repeating notes and playing scales or arpeggios, I think, are the simplest and the best uh, exercises. It's not uh, it's not really complicated to to remember that, and it's also good to to practice scales. <laughs> Yes, so another questions? Yeah, I have a, a question if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, I think in the, in these times of like social distancing that a lot of people have are having problems just finding the motivation to pick up the instrument and warm up. Um, can you talk a little bit about what motivates you and, and maybe um, just tell us what it's like where where you're playing um, as far as uh, our our gigs coming back and things like that. Yeah, that's also a very good question. It's uh, actually it's the thing what about I wanted to talk. Uh, so it's also related with uh, with sport and and caring about about my body. I have to say that when the pandemic time came. I was a bit lost and on the beginning of course I had more time for my family because I was free and I was still practicing but every day less and less I, I, I was lost because I didn't have any deadline I didn't have any upcoming concert I didn't have something what makes this motivation as you said so for me it was a problem for a moment but then I I found, uh, you know, like, of course, the music and then playing uh, instrument was for me from the very big the beginning, really huge thing. I started when I was uh, 16 and I remember that everyone told me, you shouldn't do this. First of all, you are a girl and you shouldn't play trombone. Another, you are too old and you don't have chance to, to, to you know, achieve something. And I was motivated because people told me that I can't. And now no one tells me that I can't and I have to find the motivation inside of me. And I I just left the instrument for one week and let myself to just miss it. And I was thinking about it also because I, I, uh, I had to find something what, what uh, will fill my time, free time. I started doing some some renovation in my uh, parents' house. I, I bought bike. I started biking a lot, and then because I was doing some sport and I was active, I started to be more positive, and I find that yes, it makes me more uh, you know uh, powerful. And I just missed playing trombone, and I started doing this again. And I enjoyed every every note and every uh, sound which I could get i just uh, made a, a small plan for for this what i wanted to practice so so i think it's it's really important to have something else you know like something what makes you happy what makes you positive and what gives you mm, this this power that you just want to do it again and you miss it because I realized, like I said, on the beginning, I was a bit lost. Then I had a lot of free time. I could do another thing. So I was a bit happy that I can do it. So I didn't practice that much, but suddenly I started to miss it. And I started to miss it that much that I just wanted to play. So I started playing again. And I did some, some video recordings because of some projects. Uh, so, so people wrote me if I can record this or this. So I had another motivation, which made me even more happy. And I started playing some, some you know, jazz standards and, and improvising. So I, I also found an, uh, joy in, in just playing without any pressure, without this that someone told me, you have to play like that or like this or this. And, you know, I was really free. And I think when we are free on the beginning, we are a bit lost because we need to have someone who tells us, okay, you have to do this and like this. And suddenly when you are, you know, without other people and you can do whatever you want, you just cannot find uh, the, 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 yeah, like you said, the motivation, but also the clue. Okay, so why you do it and where is going this? Okay, I do it because I like it. 
you know it's part of my life now because i like listening trombone i like playing trombone i like playing music not only trombone and uh, just find some 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 music which you want to learn maybe some advantages which are difficult for you so then you can just do it and i think because as i said i'm quite active i try to 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 train sport uh, because it makes me happy it gives me a lot of power and i i feel that i'm stronger which i need to be uh, so and it makes me more disciplined you know, it's also hard to start doing sport <laughs> because we are, as a human, we are quite lazy creatures. So it's, it's difficult to just go and, and run. It's difficult to start. But when I started and I was repeating this, even if I for first three weeks, I had to force myself to do it. After these three weeks, I, I felt that I really needed it. You know, it, uh, some mechanisms are... Uh, uh, are starting and suddenly I just felt inside that I really need to move I need to do something because uh, like in this endocrine system the endorphin is producing and I just need it I'm a bit uh, even uh, as how I should said that uh, so yeah you you feel that you really need to do it and repeat it and the same is with with playing trombone it's i know it's difficult because uh, i had the same feeling uh, but i think it's good to make a break and just let yourself to miss it and then you will come with fresh and and uh, new energy and just let you do things nicely and and this what you what you really like so if you have something what you couldn't play because you were busy with other stuff, just take them now. You have time for them. And you have time for changing some things. You have, you have time for trying new things. And I think it's, it's good to, to realize that and just, just do it, you know, keep going. Thank you, that yeah. was like super inspiring, thank you. So if you have more questions, <laughs> I'm open to, to say about it. But I also wanted to say about our bodies. Uh, like uh, when I was studying Bern, uh, I, I was really happy because before when I was in Poland, I didn't have this opportunity and we didn't talk about it too much. But of course, as probably uh, most of us, I had some problems with my neck, with my left arm. And I remember my middle, uh, uh, middle finger when I put like the whole weight of trombone is here. I just lost my feeling here and my arm until, uh, until elbow was like one day with pain, another day without any feeling. And I was, I was really, uh, you know, uh, scared. What is going on? Why, why it's like that? And then I realized that I also need to care about my body you know many hours in practice room quite heavy instrument uh, in this position which is not really natural also we as a musician we are um, uh, unfortunately uh, we are uh, exposed to enormous stress uh, which cases not only mental problems but also uh, has huge impact to our bodies so it makes some muscle tenses and and we just have to know about it. And I think it's better to prevent than, than to cure. So uh, if we think that we have to care about body, so when you practice, just make some breaks and do some yoga exercises, stretch your neck, just think about it. So uh, I also on YouTube, you can find a lot of, a lot of nice, nice uh, exercises. So, so I think everyone can, can just, go there and and find it uh, without paying which is which is really good nowadays and i remember i had for example this alexander technique i don't know how many of you uh, heard about it but it's also really really nice to to just feel the body feel the the connection between uh, you know uh, up and down that your body is stable and you you know how to uh, how to move it to 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 really uh, relax 
uh, detentions. And then when you take instrument, if you feel good, you, you play good and you work much better. So in Poland, we say in healthy body is a healthy spirit. <laughs> and I really believe that. So, so another thing, I, I also had this body balance. So there was some, some kind of exercises with ball. So we were uh, mm, throwing the ball and we had to just catch it. Uh, and the same time was, uh, was the, the music going on and we had to make some movements. It was quite strange, you know, uh, but it was really nice. And also showed me that it's not that easy to control your body, to, to be uh, aware how it works. And uh, be because I had problems and I had to go to physiotherapist and for some massage, I just uh, started to think about it, why it's like that. And uh, when I had problems, I, I was talking with people and I realized that many people has these problems. So I think, you know, until we are 20 or 18 years old, everything can be fine because we are really young and probably, yeah, we are, you know, <laughs> but when we go on and we are almost 30 or 40 or 50, we start feeling the things which we didn't care about 10 or 20 years ago. I'm now 29. And I, I see now that I'm totally different than I was, I was when I was 20, you know? I, I was much faster going back to the shape. I, I felt much, everything much easier, you know? And now it's more difficult. I, I need more time to, to go back to, to good shape. I need more time to, to just, you know, learn some things or to repair some things. So I decided to, to do some sport, to, to practice yoga, to stretch myself. And I have to say that it works. For me, it works. And I really recommend it. Uh, I think this is the topic which we don't talk too much, but uh, it's, it's really needed for everyone. And if we want to stay healthy, if we want to stay in good shape and we don't want to have any problems uh, with our body and we want that it was it is just working with us we should care about it and just just think and maybe make plan how and when and which exercises are good for us it doesn't take that much time it doesn't even uh, take uh, too much power from us but can be really, really helpful. Would you say there is a connection between being in shape for say running and having a good airflow on the trombone? Because I know sometimes when I go for a run, I cannot play very well afterward because I'm, my lungs are so tired. Okay, so maybe well, I, I never played trombone like directly after running because mostly I'm running on the evening and I like playing trombone on the morning or afternoon, but not after running. So maybe it's not a good idea to do it like directly after, uh, you know, really intense exercise, like physical uh, workout. Uh, but if you think about it in like longer time, I think it helps because you are breathing more intensively when you are running or swimming. So you use your muscles also for breathing. And, and I think you are much, much more uh, prepared for than intensive uh, breathing when you are playing trombone. Maybe not in this connection that, okay, I'm going for, uh, to, to swim. I swim one hour and after that directly play trombone. It can be difficult, of course, because you know, playing instrument is also like, like workout. We, we use the whole body, so we can be even really tired after that, not only mentally, but physically too. So, so I, I think it has to be balanced. You know, you, you have to just, and of course, I say it because I feel like that. You can feel differently. You just have to observe yourself. You have to see how your body reacts and how you feel. And you feel, if you feel that, okay, running and after that playing is not for me, you just have to reschedule this. Playing and after that running. And this, uh, like this, uh, this works for me really well. Because when I play, of course, I try to be relaxed, but sometimes I cannot 
uh, really um, uh, how to say it I cannot really be uh, I, I'm not able to to control it all the time of course you know sometimes I play really difficult places I don't think about it and I suddenly I'm tense and my arms are so you know and I have to just go down and I go running and you know when you run you just move and the whole body is is shaking so you just lose the tense which you build during practicing so for me works like that so i like uh, on the end of the day just you know sometimes even kill myself and and run really fast uh, longer distance and just feel like the, the whole body is is relaxing like that so the the all uh, intensity which i built for during the the really uh, stressful day or practice the, the really long session of practicing just loose with uh, with some exercises on the evening yeah so if you have any uh, more questions about this what i said feel free to ask I, I had a question. Um, you you mentioned that you started playing trombone when you were 16? Yes. Is that correct? So um, tip, typically that's, uh, that's later than a lot of people, uh, at least particular in the United States uh, with uh, kids in school, band programs and that kind of thing. People usually started a lot or, uh, earlier of an age. Uh, what, how, how was that? Did you just, find a trombone at a store and start practicing or were you doing it through some organization like what was the what was that like for you uh, to start yeah well this is quite a long story <laughs> uh, but we have some time so maybe I, I, I well everything started in wind orchestra I'm coming from quite small village in Poland and uh, my parents and my family they they are not musicians so I don't have this tradition I I, of course, I was singing in choir in school and, and playing some, some really simple instruments, but uh, because we were far away from the city, so my parents, they didn't have any possibility to, to, to put me to, to music school. So we had in our village wind orchestra. It was amateur wind orchestra. And someday I just went there and started playing. And I was playing this uh, alt horn. It's like... Uh, it looks like tenor horn, but it's smaller in S, in E flat. <laughs> so yeah, this was like uh, our uh, couple meister, you know, this, this uh, director. He said that it's really easy instrument and it doesn't play too much. So it's an uh, easy way to just learn something and go to orchestra. I was uh, 14 and I started to play this, but of course I was in orchestra more for people because I had there a lot of friends. Uh, but after two years, I was a bit, uh, you know, fed up with playing with this uh, not nice instrument and without any, any melodies and like nothing. And I just wanted to change for saxophone. But we didn't have free saxophone in orchestra. Uh, so I, I was looking for something. I didn't want to play trumpet but because everyone plays trumpet. I didn't want to play tenor horn because it's just bigger alt horn so for me it was no difference and of course no tuba because I, I couldn't imagine I played tuba and we didn't have trombone in our orchestra so I one time in, in the competition I saw like old guys playing trombone I, I didn't even know the instrument and I saw him how he is playing like he was playing some bass line and moving from first to sixth position and he was like really excited to do it and I was like yes this is the instrument which i want to play <laughs> and this day i i just asked my uh the, the director of orchestra and he's no we don't have trombone we don't need it nobody can play it it's it's too difficult and you're a girl you shouldn't and because he told me that i just took the instrument <laughs> and because i could you know create the sound my friend he told me how to read in bass uh, clef and so i i learned one melody and that's how I started. <laughs> so, yeah, but it was in orchestra, in, in wind orchestra. And then uh, I was 16. And the same year I, I had to go to high school. 
and uh, because I, I felt a bit more motivated and, and I had some ambitions uh, to, to do it more seriously, uh, I couldn't imagine that I, I will be a musician. I just wanted to learn it better than I could uh, in the, that time. So I signed for a music school. Uh, but of course they said that I'm too old, so they don't want me. But the trombone teacher, he just, I don't know. <laughs> he just believed that maybe I can do it and he gave me a chance. And that's how I started. And then of course on the beginning, I, I, I treated that as a hobby. So I didn't think that I will re really make it seriously. But after one year, when my work with, with my teacher was, uh, was getting better and better, I've got new instrument and, and some people told me that it sounds good. And I just, I just started to be crazy. So I throw to the trash my other plans to being a, like, uh, yeah, I wanted to be a journalist or something like that. And then just you know, decided, okay, I, I will play trombone. My mom, of course, she was really afraid and she didn't want me to do it because he, she didn't know too many musicians. She only knew, uh, you know, like this amateur musicians and, and she knew that, okay, you, you can't have money from that. You can't live with this, so you shouldn't do it. But then she just said, okay, do whatever you want. Uh, if you want, I, I will just help you as I can. But if you feel that it doesn't work, you, you just have to change it. And because I was really motivated and I cannot explain how I found this motivation. I just, I just really want it. And I believed that we can more than we think. And, you know, I had this in my head that I can break the rule and I can go even if someone told me that I cannot. I just wanted to show everyone that I can. And because I, have re I had really, really great uh, trombone teacher, he helped me a lot and he gave me this power also because it was the only one person who believed that I can play trombone professionally. So I just was keep going. And, and I remember that I had like four years uh, where I didn't have even one day without playing. It was crazy, I know, but uh, yeah, it, uh, this is how I started. And then I, I just applied to, to Music Academy in Krakow. And when I have got the place there, I, I just knew that I have to continue this. So I was really, really motivated from, from the day when I got the, the place in music school here in, uh, in Poland. Yeah. And what does your... Kapellmeister from your village say now? Yeah, well, uh, I, I lost contact with him because then he, he moved to England and uh, he was working there. I didn't have contact with him like, I don't know, for 15 years. <laughs> no, maybe not. Sorry, not 15. I didn't, I don't play trombone that long. No, maybe 10 years. Yes. And Suddenly, like uh, half a half, uh, half year ago, uh, we had a tournée in uh, Italy and I've got a message on Messenger and he wrote to me <laughs> that he's observing me on, the, on the Facebook and, and he's really surprised, but also he, he crossed his fingers and I was so surprised and, and I felt really, really nice because I didn't have uh, an opportunity to talk with him and say that because of his orchestra, I started uh, playing music and I started my adventure. <laughs> yeah, I can say like that. So yeah, I, we had like small contact uh, by messenger. Uh, because of pandemic, he didn't come to, to Poland because we, we wanted to meet, but it was in, in February and from March, everything is closed. So, so we didn't have uh, opportunity to see each other, but I hope I hope someday we, we will see each other and maybe share <laughs> our experiences. Yeah. So in my uh, example, I just can say to everyone that if you have dreams and you really want, you can do everything what you, what you can imagine. Because it's, uh, 
of course it's it's not that easy and it's difficult to says to find this motivation and uh, now we also can see how many people is playing and how good they are but i also believe that everyone of us has something special something what is not repeated and we can just find it and and give it and keep doing this if you really think and you really feel that you love it you just have to do it even if if it doesn't look uh, really easy just break the rule <laughs> Yeah. There are any other questions? And if you have stuff you want to, can you know, ask, just unmute yourself and go ahead and throw it out there. I mean, I think this is like super inspiring and you made me want to go practice now. <laughs> so it's really great. So thank you. This is, uh, I think this is all we needed. <laughs> it was, I love your, uh, your attitude and your, um, kind of, uh, just your outlook and your perspective on it. It's really, uh, it's really inspiring. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, it's, uh, it's not easy, you know, to share your thoughts because as I said, everyone is different and it's uh, difficult to compare our histories and and uh, it's important where are you from, who you are and what is your background, because this has influence to this what you do now. And because I'm from Poland, from small village, from family without uh, without musical tra the traditions, it wasn't easy to come to this world and it's it wasn't easy to to be in this world and i'm i'm really grateful that i was lucky i was very lucky i could meet a lot of great musicians which inspired me and they gave me this power and this this you know this believingness that i could just go through and and keep going and without even thinking if i do good or not now i have a lot of younger friends and they are they are struggling what to do it's not too many orchestras it's difficult to get a job of course it is but it was like that before too and if i thought about it that i can't find job because it's not enough uh, places i just had to you know resign on the beginning of my way but I thought that it doesn't matter now. Now I have to do my job. I have to practice because I like it. I have to be better because I want. And I just have to keep going and we will see what will happen. We, we never know. We cannot plan our life. We cannot plan every detail in our life. We can just do something and see what uh, life will bring us. I didn't expect that I will you know study with Ian Bosfield I, I was listening his uh, his uh, recordings I was watching him on YouTube and I was like wow this guy is really phenomenal I, I really like his playing and and it could be great to meet him some sometime and suddenly I just started studying with him you know and now it seems to be really easy but it wasn't I had to do some movements to go and to try to just be you know, positive. So this the, this is the most important thing, be positive. And I think doing some other things also will help us a lot. I found myself in doing sport because it makes me happy, it makes me powerful, and it, it gives me some good energy. So, so I feel good when I'm tired, <laughs> you know. Uh, but everyone can, can find something else. And then it's good to go back to to practice room and just do it again and again and and keep being, you know, working to to be better. And and can I ask what are the future projects coming up? Is is your orchestra going back to work now, or or do you have any projects that you're working on now in in the in the pandemic, or what what's next? Yeah, actually, in Czech Republic, uh, we work from middle of August. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so we are working. We had some uh, recording sessions, uh, and then we played some concerts. Uh, last week, we were playing nine symphonies of Shostakovich. So it was really a lot of fun. 
Next week we start a rehearsal for a Rite of Spring, so it will be my first time <laughs> and I hope we'll be fine. But I, well, I'm really looking forward, but I'm also a bit, you know, stressed because it's, it's crazy music, but it will be a lot of fun for, you, for sure. And this, this week I also play concert uh, with, yeah, we play um, Tedeum of Dvořák and, and we also play a violin concerto of uh, Henryk Wieniawski. It's really beautiful music and with really great Polish violinists. So, so slowly we started and, and I hope it will stay like that. Uh, you know, orchestra has to work <laughs> to, to keep, uh, keep uh, uh, like being on the mark because it's, of course, it's a it's difficult situation for everyone. We didn't play, we stopped in the middle of March and, uh, and we did some, some recordings for YouTube, but that was all. And in Ostrava, we also did some uh, recording sessions like, uh, you know, I, I don't remember even what, what it was, but we, we did something. But then July and, and uh, until middle of, middle of August, we didn't do anything. So, so yeah, it was, it was a difficult time. But now it's going on and hopefully we'll, we'll stay like that. And that, that's great news. And do you have audiences there or is it all just virtual or how, how are you managing with audiences? Yeah, in Poland they they made like only fifty percent of seats are taken, and in uh, in Czech Republic they just uh, make some um, uh, some places where people are. Well, they actually they, they I think they are more uh, they are less stressed about the situation, so they they give the cultural uh, sphere just leave and and if people are coming they they are they have to put masks so that's that's uh, that's the thing what they have to do but they don't have that many limits as in poland so well it's difficult to say if it's good or not for music and for culture it's, it's good for us because we can play concerts and people are coming for concerts they are not that afraid and they, are, they, they don't have really, really bad situation there in Czech Republic. So we will see. I hope we'll be fine because I'm a bit, yeah, <laughs> also confused with the situation. I don't know if it's uh, everything true or not. You know, it's, uh, it's too many uh, things on the internet. And if you read that, it's, it's difficult to believe in something. But I hope that the situation for us as a musician will be, will be fine. Well, I happy that I've, I started working in orchestra in September uh, because I was saved through the whole pandemic time. But I know it's many people who they were just like freelancing and it could be really, really problematic for them. Yeah, I think most orchestras in North America, well, USA at least, I don't know about Canada, but most orchestras I think are still pretty shut down. We're doing like little concerts and mm -hmm. parks and things like that. But um, yeah. yeah, I hope we uh, we can start to follow <laughs> soon and start to have like Shostakovich concerts again. That'd be nice. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All yeah. right. Of free. Yeah, like I, I get to play like, like chamber music things or like... Uh, you know, that's fun, but I miss the big orchestra. Are you playing bass trumpet on that or is, do you have someone else doing that? No, I will, I will play the first trombone. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, cool. The bass trumpet, okay, cool. That's fun. <laughs> Good. Have fun. Yeah, that's really fun. We will we'll, we'll see. Hopefully we'll be fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'd be I great. Really... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a cool moment. Uh, uh, it's uh, with the trumpets. It's, it's, it's spooky, I think. It always scares yeah. me a bit. Just the sound is so like... Oh, you know, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a great writing. So cool. Awesome. Well, it seems like it might be a good, uh, yeah. maybe a good moment to, uh, to button things up uh, with the, uh, with the session. And Lena, it's just so inspiring to hear, uh, you know, your story and to hear your, your insight. And, and by the way, your English is amazing. I, yeah. I you, you're, <laughs> Yeah. Don't ever concern yourself with uh with with speaking. 
push it's you're <laughs> down fi it's wonderful you're, it's wonderful um, but also oh, thank but, you. but what you say is also you know extremely inspiring and, and we greatly uh, appreciate the time uh, that you've uh, been willing to share and, and kind of give to to this you know our, our little trombone community um, and and we're, we're very grateful for that and, and thanks to everybody else uh, for uh, for tuning in and, and being a part of it and uh, you know spreading the spreading the word um, and we hope to continue to bring sessions uh, to people uh, to have some some great inspiration uh, you know that's 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 really always needed I think there's never a bad time to be inspired so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna that's I'm going to take with me, uh, you said, enjoy every note. And uh, I, I think for me, that's that's going to stay with me for a long time. So thank you for, you know, for that and everything else. But. I wish you and all of you and myself too, <laughs> that we, we enjoy every note. It's, it's sometimes it's difficult, but it's really, really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Thank right. you. Cool. Thank you so much. And See you next time. <laughs> yes. Thank you so yeah, much. You're, you're, you're always welcome at the, uh, the, the <laughs> hang. So feel free to join us whenever you can tune in. Yeah, I, I was joining and I was also watching the videos. So so for sure I will I will just do it all the time. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Wonderful. So Wonderful. one more time for invitation. I hope I hope something from this what I said will be also helpful for some some of you. Just what I can say, just uh, care about yourself because you are the most important person in your life. <laughs> That's the truth. So yeah. if something is wrong with you, it's nothing else is uh, it's important. So yeah. so just take care. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. All right. So okay. All Thanks right. for tuning in. Thank you so much. Thank you. So have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye.